Welcome to phase three, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about entries and exit points. So phase three is a really fun part of the, all the phases of all the classes. This is where we're going to actually go out there and take what we've learned, do some live trading, uh, get in and out of certain stocks, know why we got in, why we got out. Now, remember, like 70, 80% of our classes is not teaching you how to make money. That is not why you're here. You're here to stop losing it. Okay, that is what you have to fix first. The winners we worry about in the side of the room. When we're in class, we need to focus and prepare why we made that mistake, why we lost money in that position, why we're not to do it again. And this is part of what, which your whole thing with your coaching and everything else that we do here. So we're going to go out there and we're going to try to find some stocks. Stay with the hardest thing of what we need to learn, especially from the newbies that are here. The first month and two months are the hardest months to get it, uh, to just focus on. So please be very patient. If you feel like, oh, you know, this is moving too fast for me. And like, listen, it's the hardest thing is the first month. Think of it as a diet. Okay. You've been, you, you've been fixed on this diet for the past 50 years of your life. You've been eating this way. And now here we are going to change it in the next month. And you're like, it's, it just, it's just not normal to you. Eventually you'll get it, you know, um, and the reason why you're here is because you did get it. Uh, you did see how we teach you how to do it. Now we have to kind of put it to the test. Now, what we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to have three things going to happen. Okay. We're going to, um, we're going to have a good day. We're going to have a bad day and we're probably going to have two flat days. Okay. So that's usually the statistics that we go by. So we might not have anything that might be super exciting right now. Okay. And then I'm playing new other half of new stocks that will pop up out of the blue. So this is why we need to be patient because remember, are we here to make 83% on the stock? Be nice. We don't need 83%. We don't need four or $5. All we need is that 50 cents, that $1. That's all we need to make a dollar a day. A dollar a day on a thousand shares when you get to a thousand share clip is a quarter million dollar salary. That's all you need to focus on. So we need to focus on doing a hundred shares, be consistent, go to 200, go to 500. And then you'll know a little bit when you trade some more volatile stocks, you can still trade stocks at big, big movement, but you just, so we're going to start off and just looking at this one. Now we're going to probably trade some slow stocks for the next lesson or two. And then we will trade some faster stocks because Especially some people that are new here, you're going to be like, I can't keep up and I get it. We'll trade some slow ones. We'll work our way up and we'll do some trades out there. So um, I had the stock of level four. All right. And I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to show you what we got going on. And we blow this up a little bit bigger. We see a stack. Okay. We see a stack. We see a lot of sellers right here. Look at, look at this. This is called like a, I call it a seven layer cake. Okay. And it's not a ladder. It's a, it's, it's not a ladder. It's a, st it's a stack. So you're getting all these sellers, which is, we see this kind of rarely. You know, okay. Now, sell, look, look at all these sellers out here. Um, 100,000 shares at 390, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 62,000, then 45. And then we got this guy that showed up right here, 174,000, literally after the first five minutes. And then when that guy showed up, what just happened? It really went down, right? So do we want to buy this stock? No, not at all. When we see something like this, we want to stay away from it. That's it. It's over. Party's over with the stock. It's finished. Done. End the conversation. Don't go back to it. Don't look at it. Another thing I want to point out too, which is pretty cool too, that you guys want to notice is I'm going to, um, right here on the left-hand side, before 930, that's pre-market right? The algos kicked in. Okay. That's all program trading. Remember a lot of these, you got to remember that 90% of the traders that trade today don't have direct access like we do. Okay. So some of them, you know, they, they, they have these orders like on Fidelity and like, you know, Schwab or like any of those other big brokerage firms like the Merrill Edge or maybe Wendbull or whatever. So the program trade was in kicking until then. And by seeing that, if you saw that right at the open, okay, let's say we found this stock at the open and we end up buying it at 930. At what price would we own it at 930? 320, right? Now, at that moment in time, 
at 330, at 320, when the market opened up and we saw those algos kicked in, did you still want to own the stock? Absolutely not. Exactly. Because from 930 to 945, which is the 15 minutes, where is the price of the stock trading right now? 280. So simple math. What is 320 minus 280? Two dollars and eighty cents minus three three um what was it three twenty forty times I say you did a thousand shares you're down four hundred already okay so just a couple of little tricks of the keyboard so if you like because you know what happens that's like simple math right but you got it on your keyboard boom hit it and you could just type it on your calculator and done there so you're already down four hundred on a thousand shares even though it's a cheap and expensive stock. Now, how would we have prevented losing $400 right now? Back to where we started. Once that market opened up, even though we tell you to wait first five minutes, if you were in that stock before in, in pre-market, if you were in that pre-market and then the market opens up at 930 and algo started kicking in at 930 and you saw that, you're still going to wait the first five minutes to get out of it? No, I would get the hell out of it. I wouldn't even wait. You, you know, we always tell you to wait the first five minutes, but the first five minutes is when you do a trade. But if you were in that trade in pre-market, which some of us do, and we see all those algos kick in like that, we are out of that position, okay? Because if you waited five minutes of like, ah, is that real? Is it not real? At 9.35, what was the price of the stock then? Where we're at right now at 9.35. We're at $3. So you threw an extra 20 cents, an extra $200, okay? So the reason why I'm kind of like spending a little bit more time talking about this specifically and because like, like, this is what I was talking about, you know, like I'll go on a tangent on something that we're, we're supposed to do in phase three, but I'm trying to teach you a strategy. This is very rare that we do a trade. I see something like this and it's a great lesson to kind of see. This is what we kind of got to be very, uh, be very alert of, uh, because of that, if we count, we, we encounter that, that's where we get in trouble. Listen, everything is tradable, right? There's only one problem. What makes one stock more tradable than the other? All right, the spread. Remember, 50% of you fail, traders fail by trading stock that has a big, big spread. So looking at it here, what is the spread on PLI? Probably a category four, right? I mean, this stock went from 750 up to $9. That's a $1.50 run in 15 minutes. And now it dropped from $9, it dropped basically 50 cents. And if you click on these candlesticks, look at the top, look at the left-hand corner. High of that minute was 885. The low was 838. What does that make it? What does that make that spread in one minute? Yeah. Was that about 40 cents? That move, that stock moved 40 cents in one minute. Do you guys want to trade a stock that moved 40 cents? Some of you can, because when you become a little more advanced. So, you know, regardless of going up or down, I'm not interested in it. Okay. Now, um, I do want to point something out here that obviously does look pretty interesting. I want to share with you as a strategy to kind of get back what is our strategy at Cyber Trade University. Now you look at PLI, all right? It started at 750. It went to nine dollars, right? And now it's now it's going down. Now it went down from nine. Why did it stop at nine? Here we have a stock that's getting halted right now. Look at the stock how it gets halted. Green, 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 green. When we see time in sales like that, green, 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 that means it's going down. Red, red means it's going up. It's like weird. It's like the opposite. Ready to get it halted? Boom, halted. See all the time in sales, right? Uh, level two's gone. Volatility, it moved faster than what it's supposed to. And now it's going to happen. We have to wait five minutes. So when you look here at the time in sales, 9.52.09, that means if you add five minutes to that, that means at 5.57.09, it will open up. Now getting back to... The chart of why the stock hit $9 and backed off, not because it was resistance, which it was, okay? But remember, resistance does not exist unless you have those sellers, okay? That's where the resistance levels was. And if you look right there, if I move that over, I mean, it didn't sound like a lot. It was like 9,000 shares, but that was the resistance right there. This is what you get, what's nice about the heat map on level four is that um, there are sellers out there, and what happens as it's getting closer to that seller, 
more people like, oh, shoot, I got to I got to get out of this thing. I got to sell more. So it's happening. More people are jumping on and say, I, you know, oh, my God, I, it's getting to nine. And then it just it just trickles into more and more and more sellers go out there. OK, this stock looks like it's going to probably get halted uh, the way it's going up the, as fast as it's going. Look what happened over here. The stacks got filled. So you got a 70,000 share seller at 390 and you got another one here, but it just ran up. You see a big order right here. Just got filled. Looks like the person right there just left again. I'm just going to zoom in over here. You can see the orders. He got filled. He got filled. He got filled. But people are getting executed on the offer. What does that, what does that actually mean? That means that, you know, somebody's buying it from them. And what could become a negative in a bad way we saw earlier could be a huge positive. How does it become a positive? That someone actually went out there and actually bought it. Okay. When actually it executed those sellers. So right now we're hovering right at this resistance levels. And not only that, but we chased it. We bought it at like, like 390. We bought it right at that highs. Okay. After it had this huge, huge stab at, you know, from 375 in one minute, we bought it at that low, it went up. So we kind of chased that stock. How do we handle it? Well, first thing you need to do is you better make sure you got to list it. TMXM over here on the left. You better have it on two sections. Have one defaulted at market, and then this is the one we're going to load up at limit. Load up your execution system. Make sure it's set up. You know, you have it. You default. Like, you only bought 100, so you got 100 on the left, 100 on the right. Make sure you got it defaulted in two sections, okay? So you have it on both sides. Now, we chase the stock. Should we hold on to it, or should we get out of it? We need to have a game plan. So mistake number one, all right, is that we chased the stock. And that was a dumb move. And I did that on purpose because I want to see how you guys react to it. If this thing goes up, we got lucky. Okay. We got lucky. But at the end of the day, was it a, was it a good trade or a bad trade? Even if we make money, it was a bad trade. Yeah. Right now it's consolidating. Okay. Right now it's consolidating. And you could see it right here. Here's your consolidation. So you can see the low right here is probably, you know, you could see the seller what happened right here. Here was your last order, and it was at 390s where we bought it after chasing it. And now, and now you ran this. Now you own it right at that highs, okay? Because listen, if if you bought the stock at 350 and the stock was 390, would you still hold on to it? Yes or no? No. So why pay 390? Right. So the thing is, could it go up? Absolutely. But let's buy it when it's consolidating. Let's not buy it. You went already made the big run. You don't want to chase it, right? So now we're pretty much in the consolidation mode. And that's where we're at. So it does listen, it does look strong. Okay. But we just own it at a bad price, which is not a good thing. And when you own a stock at a bad price, it's hard to hold it for shakes. And that's what you have to look at it. That's the way you have to uh, focus on it. So what I like to do sometimes is if I own a stock at a bad price and it breaks out, like own it as a bad price that we have right here, I would probably go out there and say, you know what? If it breaks it, let it break it. I'm going to put a limit order out there and try to sell it and try to sell it to strength. Wait, you own it at 90, right? I'm not getting at 97. Cancel. So I would probably sell at 87 and put it out there and hit sell. And I'd rather take the three cent loss right now than try to force out of it now because that that's a pretty substantial loss right now. Okay. Now, if we had our order out there, we probably would have got executed. If you own a stock and you chased it, and he, if it goes up, you got lucky. But if you chased it, you got to just get out of it. Just move out of it. Try to sell into strength. Otherwise, you're going to have to take a loss. All right. Remember, part of trading is, and this is where everybody gets themselves in trouble, they just don't know when to take a loss. Now, what would be a good price to buy the stock? If we did like this stock, where would, what would be a good price? Around 365, not 390, right? So looking at, in this perspective, what I'm going to look for, maybe a Fausto flag, okay? I'm going to look for a Fausto flag. So it looks pretty strong. And um, it looks pretty strong. We got it. We got to get past this 390. If we get past 390, four dollars, 
And then guess what? Sky's the limit. So this right here was a hell of a lot of orders that got filled, unless they all cancel. That's a lot. Remember, remember how much it was before? It was like 50, 50, 50, 50. It was like almost like maybe three, four hundred thousand. Stock trade 62 million. All right. Now looking at it, we got to go back in history and we got to find resistance levels. So when we go back in history, we can see that right around this section, right around here, we got resistance levels. Okay. So it looks like definitely four and maybe 419. So right around there. This one's pretty good. 26 million shares, nice spread. Stock had just made a nice little run, right? Dollar 10, dollar 20. Looks good to me. All right. So do we buy it here? Yes or no? No, absolutely not. Why not? Got to have a game plan. We don't want to chase the stock. First of all, it just ran from a dollar 15 to a dollar 30, which is about 15 cents. Okay. So what are we looking for again? Consolidation and iceberg orders. All right. So let's go check out right here. You could see from resistance, it was a hell of a big seller. And he's been out there since 830 this morning, right here at a dollar 30. Okay. So I would probably say no. All right. Big seller out there. He hit there at 815. He came all the way back down to 105. And finally went right back up to that 130. And you can see what it's basically doing. Went right up to that resistance. If you didn't have your limit order out there and didn't get out, now you're down to 127. Now, listen, it could break it. That can happen. It happened, you know, in in the, in the, C, the, the CTMX. But what we want to see is consolidation happen. And it doesn't look like it's doing that. It's not only one, it's two big orders. And this is different. This is not like the the, the CXMX. CMXS, um, you could, these orders were out there and they left. You know, they left these orders. See how different it is now what it looks like when we start backing off? Big, big, big difference right there. So um, regarding regarding the the CTMX, okay, a couple of things I want to point out, you know, about that trade. First of all, um, it was skill, but we did get lucky. We got lucky that it popped that much. And the thing is, we were just in the right place at the right time. That's where it came down to it. We found it. We chased it. Felt a little patient. We it wasn't backing off like it was doing right now. Okay. But we were just in the right place at the right time. That's basically the way it came in. But, uh, but so far, an excellent class. Great day to start uh, phase one with, right? Now, if you're new here to Cyber Trade University, uh, and, and this is like your first phase three, hopefully we didn't overwhelm you. But these are things that you're going to need to learn, you know, when it comes to trading. All right. And don't worry about it. It's going to take ill, ill sick in the first month and second month, always the hardest, but, uh, hopefully, you know, you learned a lot from it. All right, guys, let's go hop into the cyber group room. I'll see you back here at three o'clock.